we continue with the problem of factoring polynomials. Here, we'll only consider the case of factoring quadratics. Now, for us, a quadratic polynomial is going to be in the form x squared plus bx plus c. a, b, and c are integers. We'll have a single variable, say x. Highest exponent is going to be a 2. So we have square terms, but no cubes, fourth powers, and so on. For this to be a quadratic, I have to have the square term, so we'll also insist on a being non-zero. Now, we'll have two techniques, and then in the next part, we'll look at special cases. For our first technique, okay, this is really a special case. It's a warm-up. I'll have a equal to 1, b and c non-zero. So we're looking at a quadratic of the form x squared plus bx plus c. If I could factor this into polynomials of lower degree, that means they have just x's in them, so they're linear. So I have x plus m, x plus n. Now, if I have something times x times another something times x to get an x squared, because we're insisting on integers, that only happens if those somethings are either both 1 or both minus 1. If they were both minus 1, we could push the minus signs around to make it so that we have both plus 1. So let's assume that. Now, we FOIL. When we work things out, we match up powers of x, and we see that if I have a factorization like this, might not exist, we have to have the conditions c equals m times n and b equals m plus n. When we consider signs, we have a checklist. Step one, okay, this is just to keep us in the habit, we always look for a greatest common factor. Now here, because a is equal to one, there's not gonna be anything to pull out except in special case where c is zero. So there, what would happen is we have x times x plus b. First real step, we check the sign on c. So if c is positive, okay, c is equal to m times n. So that means m and n have to have the same sign. They're either both negative or both positive. The way we determine that, we check b. If m and n are both negative, we would get a negative b m and n are both positive, we would get a positive b. If c is negative, m times n is negative, which means one is positive, one is negative. So that means we'll have one of each. Keeping signs into account, we're gonna factor c into pairs. So when we do our factorization, okay, we consider signs, and then we ask if our factorization sums to b. If we hit out one of those sums, that's going to tell us how we have our factorization, and then we're done. Thing to note, when I have c negative, okay, when you factor your c into pairs, okay, you want to check one with a plus and a minus, and then check that same pair with minus plus. If it works, then you check your work, okay, multiply out, see that you get your original polynomial back. If you can't find a pair that works, then you're in the special case where we have a prime. So that means a polynomial that cannot be factored. Now, let's go through our checklist with basic example and then we'll increase difficulty. So let's try 2x squared plus 10x plus 12. I look for a greatest common factor. I can pull a two out. So note, now I'm in the special case where we have a equals one. So I have x squared plus 5x plus six. We match things up to ABC, M and N. Our C, is equal to 6, b is 5, a is 1. So we note c is positive. So that means I check the b to get the sign pattern. So that means they're both positive, so I have a plus here and a plus here. c is equal to 6. So I consider all ways to factor 6. So those are going to be 1 and 6 and 2 and 3. If I try 1 and 6, I take the sum, I get a 7. That's not equal to b, which is 5. If I take 2 and 3, take the sum, I get a 5, that's equal to b. So that means we're going to have x plus 2, x plus 3. So that's my factorization here. Of course, we check our work, so you would FOIL to see that we get back our original polynomial. Next, let's factor x squared minus 7x plus 6. We have a equals 1, b is minus 7, c equals 6. Because C is positive, okay, the sign pattern is either plus plus or minus minus. 
We check B, which is negative, so it's minus minus. Now, I consider factorizations of 6 into pairs. So we have 1 times 6 or 2 times 3. 1 times 6, since we have pattern minus minus, I consider minus 1 minus 6, I get a minus 7. That is equal to B, so we have our answer. Okay, we factor our polynomial into x minus 1 times x minus 6. Of course, we check our work, so I FOIL, and we note we get back our original polynomial. One more. Let's try x squared minus 2x minus 24. So here I have a equal to 1, b equal to minus 2, c equal to minus 24. c is negative, so the sign pattern is plus minus. We have one of each. I consider factorizations of 24 into pairs. Okay, so here we know we have one of each, so I'll just drop the minus sign. So the possibilities are 1 times 24, 2 times 12, 3 times 8, or 4 times 6. Now, we have 1 plus and 1 minus, so we're really just taking all possible differences. So 1 and 24 won't work, 2 and 12 won't work, 3 and 8 won't work. When we get to 4 and 6, minus 4 plus 6 is 2, which doesn't work, but 4 minus 6 is minus 2. That's equal to our b, so this works. That means I'll use x plus 4 times x minus 6. Of course, we check our work, so we FOIL. We see that we get back the original polynomial. Now, you'll note, after you do enough of these, you'll be able to work out the factorizations in your head if they exist. We move on to the next method. So this is the AC method for the quadratic AX squared plus BX plus C. We focus on the case where A is strictly bigger than zero. Now, our first step, of course, we factor out the greatest common factor. If A is negative, I want to factor out the minus sign from A pull that through the whole polynomial. So that'll give us a greater than zero once we do the factorization. We multiply a times c. Then our next step, as before, we're going to factor a times c into pairs which sum to b. Now, we have the same sign convention as before. Okay, so a is greater than zero, so I really only need to check c. If a times c is positive, that's plus plus or minus minus. A times C is negative, it's plus minus. We have one of each. Now, if I can't find a pair that sums to B, we won't be able to factor this polynomial, and then we're in the case where it's prime, and then we stop. If I can write B as a sum of factors, we're going to use that sum to split BX, okay, using what we did here, and we note that's going to give me a polynomial with four terms. So that means we can apply grouping. Now, Grouping is not 100%, but in this case, grouping is always going to work if we can find our pair in part two. So that's going to get us to our answer. And of course, our final step is just to check our work. Let's put some examples through our checklist. First, we have 20x squared plus 22x plus 6. First step, factor out the greatest common factor. So here we can pull out a 2. So we really want to work with 10x squared plus 11x plus 3. Now here, the a is greater than 0, so our checklist applies. We take a times c, which is equal to 30. We know that this is positive, so the sign pattern for the split for b is plus plus or minus minus. Because b is equal to 11, which is positive, that means it's a plus plus. Now, I'm going to factor 30 into pairs. So possibilities are 1 times 30, 2 times 15, 3 times 10, 5 times 6. I take the sums. To get to our b, which is 11, I need 5 and 6. So that tells me how I split 11x. I'll write 11x as 5x plus 6x. Now, note that we could also use 6x plus 5x. We'll get the same answer in the end, just using a different grouping. Next, we apply grouping. So we're going to have two pairs. For the first pair, I can pull out a 5x, which leaves me with a 2x plus 1. For the second pair, I can pull out a 3. That also leaves me with a 2x plus 1. So grouping applies. We pull out the 2x plus 1. We get our factorization 5x plus 3 times 2x plus 1. Now note, this is the factorization of what's in the parentheses here. 
To get our answer, I need to put back in the greatest common factor, which is equal to two. So we have our answer here. Finally, I leave it to you to do the FOIL to check the work. So we should get back the original polynomial. Another example. Here we'll want the plus minus split. So I'll use the polynomial, 4x squared plus 4x minus 3. Okay, this should be familiar from the previous part. We'll see here that it factors even further. Now, going through the checklist, there's no greatest common factor. We have a greater than 0, so I take a times c, and I get a minus 12. Because a times c is negative, the split for b will be plus minus. I consider all factorizations of a times c into pairs. So we have 1 times 12. Okay, we put in each sign, and we see that we don't get our 4 when we take the sum. If I try 2 times 6, okay, we note 4, the minus 2, and the 6. If I take the sum, we get the 4 that we're looking for for b. So that's going to give us the split for that 4x. We're going to have 6x minus 2x. Note we could also use minus 2x plus 6x. We get to the same answer with different work. Now, okay, we rewrite our polynomial with our split. We have four terms. I can apply grouping. Out of the first pair, we could pull out a 2x. That leaves a 2x plus 3. Out of my second pair, okay, note we're looking for 2x plus 3, but we're off by a minus sign, so I'm really factoring out a minus 1. Now, we have like factors. I could pull out a 2x plus 3. That leaves me with 2x minus 1. Okay, and here, note, I like to put in that 1 to make it clear what I'm factoring out. So, our factorization, 2x minus 1 times 2x minus 3. I'll leave it to you to do the FOIL to make sure that we get back our original polynomial to check our work. To finish, let's consider an example that's prime. If we pick one of these polynomials at random, it's most likely to be prime. On the other hand, if I want to guarantee a quadratic that's not prime, I just take two linear factors, multiply them together. Now, for 5x squared minus 3x plus 4, okay, we do our checklist. So I first note, there's no greatest common factor to pull out. We have a greater than 0, so we can proceed. We take a times c, it's equal to 20. That's positive. So the sign pattern for how we split b is plus plus or minus minus. Now we note b is equal to minus 3, so it'll be minus minus. We consider all factorizations of ac in the pairs. So I have 1 and 20, 2 and 10, and 4 and 5. If we take the sum of their negatives, okay, we have minus minus here, I have minus 21, minus 12, minus 9. We've exhausted all possible cases, so we're never going to be able to split B in a way that allows us to use grouping. So here I have no match, which means our polynomial is prime.